Ah, yes. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to a very special episode of Veterans Minimum. I am your host, Nick Dayus, at the Lame Shows, where you can find me, my guy, sitting opposite of me in a very, very stylish soccer jersey. What is that, England? Yes. Is it, what, what, uh, was it the Euro Cup one, World Cup? Oh, uh, this is like from 2014, so. Interesting. Yeah. A double. Alan, what up, bro? Yeah. It's like nine degrees today, so I had to wear a same light, but I'm like peeling, so I can't wear a tank top, so no like random basketball jerseys, so I got to protect the arms for it so the camera doesn't explode. There you I'm go. I'm peeling bad. Oh, I thought you meant because of the gun show, Oh, baby. I'm not bra- that braggadocious. Okay. But, uh, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Humble. Take yeah. the high road. Yeah. We're, we're a week away. Yeah, man. I'm very, very excited. From Arrowhead Massacre, maybe? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So, ah, uh, man. This is, you know, this is a very, very special episode for me and for the brand Veterans Minimum. The first ever episode of VM was the preview show, 2015, and it's come a long, long way. So first and foremost, I want to give a big shout out to everyone that's listened, shared, commented, slandered, loved, hated the show. It all, all is going in the right direction, and it's all appreciated. And I cannot thank everyone that's listened. A lot of new fans have joined. Welcome aboard. We appreciate you. Alan, my guy in particular. Here we go. I plan this out. A little showmanship. Here we go. Keep your balls clean. Oh, yeah. Right? Cheap plug, Manscaped. Oh, hell yeah. VM at checkout. Hopefully, I can get a thank you this time. Thank you very much, sir. (laughs) So I I sent Alan merch, and he's like, yeah, man, they sent me a youth... And I don't wear I don't wear black tank tops because it gets hot in the summer. I was like, oh okay. I, I sweat profusely. <laughs> you know I'm skinny. I sweat profusely. Well, you're also not as hairy as I am, so I find that rather alarming. Is that what genetics? Well, Eastern Europeans usually are yeah, hairy. That's true. But, that's true. If you guys are noticing, we are sitting a little bit closer than usual, just because this table we need more space, man. Because we both got our laptops. I will say that this is the one episode a year. Uh, hate me if you'd like that. I am the most prepared for. Because you need depth charts, you need stats. I need everything, bro. I'm I'm running through. We're going to spend so much time on so many teams that throughout the year, we'll probably just like shy away. Spoiler, Jacksonville. Oof. Washington. <laughs> uh, unless a new controversy comes out. <laughs> so this is this is my probably my favorite episode of the year. I love it. And Alan, I appreciate you being on board for VM uh, the last year. It's been fun to... Uh, grow close with you and to to pick your brain man i always valued your opinions when it comes to football appreciate that you know your stuff been the grind for a long time yeah man yeah Yeah, and i'm happy to see some of the shit going on for you all right 2020 nfl season one like no other we haven't had preseason alan so i want to open up a discussion about that real quick what are your thoughts of no preseason because there's there's two different camps with that, right? There's the ah preseason doesn't matter, that shit is whack anyway. No one plays more than two drives camp. Mm-hmm. And I respect that and I feel that. But on the flip side, we'd have no Russell Wilson. We'd have no Daniel Jones hype last year lighting up that jet secondary. <laughs> Besi- all right besides new york i don't know where the else the hype was right nah, i know <laughs> just you know gotta throw it out there a lot of dj love coming but uh, on a serious note right like tony romo went down in the preseason now that's the bad side of preseason and that opened up the door to Dak. and then before you know it romo is doing cbs commentary mm-hmm. how do you feel about preseason being canceled and do you think that's going to be something that's going to be a detriment to teams Coming out the gates. I think it's a detriment technique-wise. I think tackling is going to be a disaster the few, first few weeks. The coverage bust as well because you know, with new coordinators, particularly on the defensive side, they try to figure out you know zone schemes, man schemes. I just I just think preseason is good for at least repetition, trying to get the scheme. Now, obviously, you're not going to be too complex because you don't want to give away certain stuff. Like I think offenses keep it quite basic. but Very vanilla. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like they need to – it's very much key when it comes to repetition. You just want to see guys kind of gel, at least give them some sort of familiarity, whether it's on the offense or defense side. Like like in Gakwe, I just went to Minnesota. I'm sure Mike Zimmer wishes he could get a couple reps with him just to see how creative you could use him. So I think that's where preseason comes in, just more from a technique and you know timing standpoint. But I think personnel-wise, you know, I think most teams are pretty stabilized, you know, barring a few that have you know rookies coming, especially like Cincinnati, for instance. <laughs> I think this is going to be the year, and based off my predictions, which we're going to run through, I'm leaning a lot towards the known than the unknown. 
And what I mean by that is I'm higher on teams that have quarterback head coach coming back. Continuity, uh, chemistry, the experience of one another. I'm down on players across the board, especially early from both a prop standpoint, DFS standpoint, and also a production standpoint. Like, for example, guys like D-Hop going to Arizona, you know, how, how much have you worked with Kyler Murray? There were some reports how he was nursing a little bit of a hamstring injury, but nothing too dramatic to, you know, take him in the seventh round. He's going to drop or some shit in fantasy. But I'm worried about the new pairings, right? Burrow and Zach Taylor, a very pass-heavy offense over there. What is that going to be like? And Daniel Jones and Joe Judge, things like that, where I'm leaning more towards the, you know, Peyton Breeze. Peyton Breeze. Pete Carroll and Russell. Wilson. Yeah. You know, Quinn and Ryan. There's some continuity there. There's some there's, there's something that can't be taught when you have that in there. You know, Ryan to Julio. I expect that to be like flying colors. They've been doing that for how long? Eight years now? About that. So that's where that's how I feel about the preseason. I couldn't agree with you more about and I, I think I said this like two months ago, dude, and it might have been with you on the show how I think we're going to see a lot of ugly football first, like, month. I just think people are going to be grateful football's back, it, but then they'll be a little critical. Like, <laughs> Yes. It's yeah. going to, like, if if we go back, like, around this time next year, right, we go back and we look at this first month of the season, we're going to be like, man, we had a super hard on for the season being back, but there was some bad, you know, bad tackling, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, timing's going to be off. Right. That's why I think this is the most unique NFL season We've ever had. Like, I'm already expecting, like, Tyreek Hill to be, like, 20 yards downfield wide open next week. And, like, Houston's secondary would be, like, what just happened? Well, I also <laughs> think that would be the case if that wasn't. That's <laughs> if that one was thing. Preseason. Well, I've seen, like, blatant coverage buzz. Like, yeah. how do you leave Tyreek Hill? Like, he's been doing this for how long? But I think those are things that to keep in mind. But I just think now people are going to be great for football. But if your team's struggling, you're going to be very critical. Especially if you're, like, because one thing you have to take in to account it's like man if you're coaching the hot seat say you're like a matt patricia or dan quinn because this is where coven comes in it's like say you lose like a star player to coven they're out three weeks and it affects your record like i don't know how owners are going to evaluate that like if detroit lost kenny god there falcons lost julio jones and they're out for two three weeks and they lose those games and you look at come january oh you went six and ten but how can we keep that like how you how you gonna rate that if you're owner you might just be fed up because those two coaches are definitely on the hot seat yeah yeah i would say for for coaches like that Mm -hmm. it might it might not matter yeah i feel like you're you're already on the hot seat and you're playing with fire whereas you know i think you could give some leeway to like a matt nagy yeah as much as i don't like him i think yeah a nagy uh even zach taylor going back to that like if they go four and 12 which is kind of where i'm at with the bengals it's like ah you know what i got a rookie quarterback i had no offseason i couldn't train with him i couldn't work with him his timing is off with the receivers and shit and what's well, a rebuilding project i'm looking at that more too. like man Nagy's first year they went to the playoffs they had dominant defense yeah, yeah i think just teams with somewhat expectations because I, I you look at teams like carolina and since it's like all right we know washington this is gonna be a two-year three-year project like you know we just want to see some players emerge that's pretty much the goal of this season yeah man yeah so i'm uh I'm curious to see how that's going to go. I, I do think we're going to see some ugly football off the gate, oh, 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 off rip. But let's get into it, bro. Let's get into it. You want to do AFC or NFC first? We do, do AFC. You, AFC? All right. Let's start with a division, which for the most part, the last, I don't know, eight years, nine years, 20 years has been ran. Yeah, that's an understatement. Yeah. Uh, the AFC East. Let's start it over there. Last year, New England wins it, of course. A guy by the name of Tom Brady in his last season with the Patriots. He moves on. He goes to Tampa Bay. The New England Patriots in the Brady era. You're not much of a gambler, are you? I'm not. If you were to blindly, from 2001, bet on the New England Patriots against the spread, every single game that they played, what percentage do you think you'd be victorious? Damn, I'm not good at this at all. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take a guess. I don't know. It's, you want like a percentage? Yeah, yeah. From from zero to 100, I'll give you a hint. It's incredible and nothing's ever been duplicated by it. Was it like 85 or something? It's 60. Okay. 
and 60% as a professional better, you're probably, if you could do 60% every year, you're talking about something monumental and historic. It's just, like 54, 55%. Is what professional betters aspire for. Right. And then you could turn a profit when you factor in the juice and the big. So, Alan, lead us away, man. How do you, who do you got winning this division? I was really leaning New England, but then the opt outs kind of scared me. I think losing Patrick Chung, who I know isn't a star by any means, but he is someone that Bill Belichick really values for versatility and leadership purposes. I think losing him, Marcus Ken, Dante Hightower, those are three really crucial pieces to what New England does, and you talk about continuity, those guys have been there forever. So I'm leaning Buffalo, even though I do think the hype for Buffalo is a little inflated. <clears throat> so I hear you on the holdouts, right? Uh, no, opt-outs. Opt-outs, yeah. yeah, due to COVID. Uh, a lot of big names on the defense more so than the offense. Um, you know... <clears throat> I feel like this is me betting on Josh Allen. It is. That's what Sean McDermott put it bluntly. He's like, we put all the pieces together. And our team goes where Josh Allen goes. Uh, I'd be worried. He's very erratic. I, I Casually, like if you're somebody with no investment in the bills, whether you're a fan or betting, whatever it may be, like Josh Allen's fun to watch, but he is as erratic as it gets. And for someone that has is known for their arm strength, I think, was he second? Worst completion percentage on deep throws last year. Like he's just wildly inanner- inaccurate. Like you could have a cannon, but it doesn't really matter when you can't complete it. And Stephon Diggs was throwing, I don't want to say tantrums, but he was vocal about how Kirk Cousins missed him on um, so many passes. And now it's like, okay, you got Josh Allen. This is kind of a downgrade from an accuracy standpoint. So I think that's because you look at the playoff game against Houston. I think a lot of quarterbacks, you put them in that position. I think they win that game. And I think Josh Allen kind of threw it away a little bit. So uh, I think Buffalo has enough pieces where, and the coaching, you have to give credit to the coaching. I love what Sean McDermott's doing there. I think they have enough there to win a division, but I don't think they're a contender. He goes from a guy that he didn't really have the best chemistry with in Kirk Cousins. Um, there was always the complaints and the rumblings like you heard and even called them out uh, in the media. They're also in a run-heavy offense. So Very run-heavy yeah. offense, yeah, for sure. With the fancy over there in Minnesota and then Dalvin Cook and those guys. Mm-hmm. Now you go to a guy who struggles to connect with you deep. And I get that he has a hose and he was on here and he was like, yo, MVP Josh Allen. I was like, nah, nah, no way. <laughs> but he just because you have a big arm doesn't mean that you're accurate. And I think that's where Josh Allen falls into right the buffalo is one of four divisional favorites that did not win the division in 2019 i'm still going new england bro Ooh, okay i'm still hey, I, I still think they're a playoff team so here's the thing about new england right i sure the brady era is over but i want to really look into cam cam newton you can make a strong case alan 2018, they're six and two going into that Steeler Thursday night game. And all and fall apart. Y- fall apart. You're being nice. Yeah. It, they like yeah. I don't know what the fuck happened there. Maybe it was a short week. Well, then Thursday the, nights are always Thursday nights are madness. Always, but then yeah. you know Eric Reed got ejected. Cam threw a couple of picks. It was just it was just one of those bad times. But then you know Cam's shoulder started to fall apart. The shoulder yeah. issues. Came they won a game play. after that. Once I don't think they won another game that season. I th- I think you might be right. I think they might have won, went like one in one in seven to so close out. The Cam year. eventually shut down. Yeah. yeah, but they get blown out by Pittsburgh. And at the time, you're looking at them like they're in the running for the division. They're in the running for a playoff. Cam, the last time he was healthy that year, from a QBR standpoint, was having a better season than the year he won MVP. Now, I know the kickback is, bro, you want him to go back 18 months ago and be the player that he was two years ago, I should say. Yeah, that's fair. I get that. I like to buy into the guy who has been pushed aside, uh, no one's high on, buying low on him, contract year, right? He signs a one-year deal there. I He gets named the captain. He gets named the starter. In New England. And dude, I just I just think 
he is they're going to dominate the division because I just trust Belichick being better than all the coaches in there. All right? And I like McDermott. But I'm I'm on New England here winning this division, dude. I, I've come around. I'm still going to bank on what I know and it's it's more so a play against Josh Allen here. Like I got the Patriots going ten and six. Okay. I got them going nine seven. Nine and seven. I got Buffalo going nine and seven. Okay. Now I'm giving Buffalo a wild card. Yeah. Like those are my two teams that are coming out this division as far as playoff teams. Right. I think the one issue I have with Buffalo is Josh Allen. I think you look at this roster and you're like, yo, they kind of have a Super Bowl roster, dude. Offensive line is more than competent. Top it's, three corner, excellent D line. Their D line's deep. Yeah. You know, at, they got Addison McDermott using those Carolina connections. Uh, maybe he could get the best out of Josh Norman. Josh Norman's just a wild card at this point. I think maybe he'll get the pressure of relief from him with Tredavious White on one side. But Jerry Hughes is still really good. Ed Oliver was starting to come into his own. So they got a lot of pieces there. Diggs, Beasley, Brown, Singletary, Knox. That's a that's a, some nice weapons there for Josh Allen. But I think I still don't see it with Josh Allen. Uh, I'm, I'm worried about him. And... It's more of a play on New England and their roster and the infrastructure there than it is against Buffalo. So I'm going New England to win this division. I got Buffalo at 9-7. and seven. This might be a surprise to you. How do you feel about Miami? Uh, I'm encouraged, but there's still way too many holes, particularly in the trenches. That's where I'm most concerned with. Like I do think they have some good pieces. I'm intrigued by Preston Williams because I've been doing a lot of fantasy lottery. Dude, you know, he yeah. was actually quietly really good. It's just last year of Miami, like who really watched Miami because the whole story of Miami was the tank job. Like who was really watching? But and he put up some serious numbers before tearing his ACL. You know, he was a first round talent, second round, day day one or day two talent. But he had some character issues coming out of college, and then he tore his ACL last year too. But yeah, he's been someone that's been popping up in a lot of projections, a lot of. People in the fantasy community have been like, yo, there's a guy who could be a, a, a guy that could get seven to eight targets right. a game. And, yo, you had a couple guys opt out from Miami. It's really Devontae Parker, and that's it. Gazeki's coming on a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, but, you know, the backfield is... I always will be a Matt Breida guy. I know no, he's... Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. But Jordan Howard's Jordan Howard's just, you know, powerhouse back, goal line work. I've been waiting for years to a team being like, yo, Matt Breida here, man, run wild. Dude, that 2018 season, this guy was on injury report every week and still managed to play. Like, he would have four different injuries Bro, he, for a really bad Niners team that was starting. Oh, who's that QB? Nick Mullins. There. Nick yeah. Mullins. Yeah, the yeah. franchise Nick Mullins, Nick baby. Mullins. But by issue Miami, I just think offensive line, a lot of question marks. D-line, not a lot of difference makers. That's the real concern because I think secondary they really invest a lot in that. It looks really good on paper, and you know, they got a couple of playmakers on offense, and we'll see when eventually Tua gets on the field. So I'm encouraged by them, but like I still think they're six and ten. I have them at seven and nine. Okay. Um, third in the division. You know the thing with Miami is they are rebuilding. I love what they did this off season too. For most part, yeah. Byron Jones, you you address the offensive line in the draft. You get Tua, who I still think that if he pans out, bro, it's like I don't give a fuck what your grades were. It's an A plus. You reunite Van Noy with Flores. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So you have now a guy in full. Flores has a guy now in Van Noy who he can look at and say, "Hey, man, I got a I got a quarterback in my defense, a guy that I trust, yeah. a guy that's been in my system." And he's he a knows. lot of blitzes with him too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and you know Byron Jones coming over, I thought that was one of the bigger additions a team made. And sure, did they overpay for him? Yeah, but you got it for you mm-hmm. to take someone's free agent they had a cap space, and you had yeah. cap space. Yeah. yeah, so I I like what Miami's yeah. doing down there. Um, last in the division, look away, Gangrene, four and twelve. I got the Jets. I got them at three and thirteen. Three and thirteen. Okay, yeah. tell me why. Oof, where to begin? I just offensively, like they're banking on Denzel Mins, who's barely practiced this in training camp. Uh, Perriman's injured. I like Jameson Carr, but he's just a slot guy at best. That's about it. Offensive line. Like I'm intrigued. If there's one thing excited, I'm generally excited about seeing Beekton at left tackle because he just seems like a massive human being with a lot of good measurables. It's just a matter of what technique when it comes to watching you play. Like I think he should become a star. But it's just this roster is just so devoid of talent. I think if you're a Jets, it's just 
deal with Gase for another year and just hope, you know, come draft time, they got to start banking on because obviously they trade Jamal Adams. You know, they have a lot of draft capital and, you know, you, you have Joe Douglas there. He's been making low key some good moves. It just for just ride out this year. Because remember, they lost Mosley. It's crazy. They gave Mosley that contract and now he's played, what, one game? Like that offseason is looking real bad between him and Le'Veon. Who knows if he's going to be on the roster come October? I don't know who's taking that contract, but it just seems like that's not going down a good road either. So, yeah, they just don't have talent. I don't believe in the coaching. I've been always critical of Adam Gase, and you know I'm not a Greg Williams guy. It's just there's not much to be encouraged by. We talked about PFS projections of Sam Darnold through the first two years of his career. I think this is a big Darnold year. Um, like maybe not his production, but just for him. Mm-hmm. You know, we you know we talked about it. I, I think he might be damaged goods. I don't know. We gotta wait and see. There's one thing I do know. You're right about Mosley being out. You're right about Adams being out. Um, they've had a couple of bad off seasons too. Like Tremaine Johnson was. Was that nightmare. that was eighteen or seventeen? Maybe it was eighteen. I know. I think it might have been seventeen. No, no, it he was, was still on the Rams. I remember he was in that Rams playoff team against the Falcons. Right, and then eighteen, they go to the yeah. Super Bowl, and that was his first. Year. Okay, yeah. so it was eighteen. Yeah, that flopped um, colossally. Yeah, and you know, the Jets won in spite of Sam Darnold over the second half of the season when he came back from mono, like from week eight on. Wait, like in spite of him, in sp- yeah, like his. He didn't play well. He didn't play well. I thought. Like, I thought from, it was just because of favorable matchups. Like you look at who they beat. Like what was their most impressive one last year? Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. But they they caught Dallas on a high. Yeah. They caught Dallas with with Donald coming back. That was his first game okay. back. That I, was their best win. I know they beat Pittsburgh, but you know who's Pittsburgh's QB? Like Pittsburgh had a great roster last year, yeah. but th- that QB probably just completely fell apart. And other than that, like they just pretty much beat up on a lot of bad teams, and they were fortunate to play the Bills that week seventeen. Like I remember, like I have a lot of buddies are Jeff fans, like oh, team went one in seven to seven nine. I'm like, name me their most best, vi- name me their like biggest opponent, like quality of wins, like name me one. And they struggle. They named Dallas. I was like, well, that was the one win. It, you know, Jason Garrett, Jason Garrett, that kind of that game. You know, they go five and two in one score games. That's always a red flag for me. They were minus four in turnover margin. Uh, that should improve because year in, year out, those tend to, to regress a little bit. But it's they have much talent. They don't have yeah. much talent. Yeah. Who's who's their best offensive player? It's 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 Bell, who I'm very hesitant about. The reports coming out of Jets camp is that Gore is like playing really, really well. I'm intrigued by Chris Herndon if he can stay on the field. Herndon, whether he's either hurt or suspended, that's an issue. I think that's who Sam Darnold has the best chemistry with. Mm-hmm. They lose Robbie Anderson also. Who? Yeah, we talked about oh, that. Yeah, it's that's a, that's a big weapon for him, and he was a guy who he was comfortable with. I'm, I'm not gonna be too down on that because I've been saying like free Robbie for like two years, so <laughs> I'm just glad he's out of there. But no, for Jeff fans, I can see why they're frustrated because they didn't really replace him. Especially like I'm I'm excited about Beaton, but at the same time, this was a receiver class that could be historically great, and they in draft won the first round, which I can see why they're frustrated by that. Even though clearly. Offense line has been a massive concern. You know, I think last year they overachieved. They went seven and nine last year. Yeah, but they beat up on a lot of bad teams. That's like no, like, I know. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like that, it was remarkable considering that Luke Falk started for them. Also, like this is a team where there was they had a game. nightmare start the season schedule wise. They had played a, re- a lot of really good teams as well. The New York Jets have the biggest difference in year-over-year year strength of schedule at plus 21, from fourth easiest to seventh hardest. We talk about Mosley opt-out, massive loss for that defense. Like, Think about it, dude. I know it's a one-game sample size, but when they played the Bills week one, they were shutting out Buffalo. For like, what, two and a half quarters? Yeah, yeah. like going like They're up to the third nothing. quarter. Yeah. yeah, And Mosley was like, yo, that might be the best signing of the offseason. And, and I understand... I, I get it. It was one game mm-hmm. and super overreaction. Mm-hmm. And then you trade away Adams. And I just think that that's a lot of a lot of star power that they lost there on the defensive side. And, you know, Quinn and Williams, again, wait, wait on giving a plus for the Jets because they got this pass rush out of Alabama. It's like, bro, you don't know. I can't yeah. stress that enough. You don't know just because some mock drafts had guys there and whatnot it just, it just doesn't apply so i think the jets man I'm, I'm i'm looking at four and 12 and i think they'll be in the discussion to have a, a top five draft pick yeah. you want to go over the records quickly we, so you got yeah it. sure sure so good call on that i got the patriots 10 and 6 bills 9 and 7 dolphins 7 and 9 
Jets four and twelve, and my two playoff teams coming out are the Patriots winning the division and the Bills as one of the wild cards. Remember, remember, first season with fourteen playoff teams. So we do have that extra wild card. So if we say your team is an eight and eight team, might be a playoff team. Eight and eight might be able to get you into the dance. Sure, you want to go above five hundred. I get it. I get it. I'm with you on that too. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's Bills at 10-6, Patriots 9-7. They're actually my last team to make the playoffs, so they're going to benefit from this. Uh, Dolphins 6-10 and and Jets at 3-13. and What division you want to go to next in the AFC? Best one, AFC North. AFC North. All right, so we're going counterclockwise, right? Is that the rotation we're doing? You know what I called counterclockwise once? <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> yeah. As I load up the depth charts. Oh, man. <laughs> I said anti-clockwise. Yikes. I don't think I've ever heard that in my life. <laughs> yeah, I've said some dumb shit. You know, one time I tried to call coconut coca conut. I've had some bad moments, bro. I'm a professional, Alan. But man, sometimes. But how is that even possible? Coca. Bro, me and Dylan are waiting to go see. Uh, it was one of the Avengers movies, I think. We're waiting online to go in. And I'm like, yo, bro, they got this like slurpy, slushy drink. Oh, I love me some slurpy. Right? <laughs> I'm like, bro, they, you know, when you go to the movie theater yeah. and shit, I'm like, dude, I want to go get it, man. It's that fruit. I'm like, yo, it's that fruit, bro. It's like it hangs on the trees and shit. Yeah. And Dylan's like, yo, you got to be more specific than that. <laughs> I was like, yo, it's like white, and um, I was like, Jimmy Snooker got it broken over his head. Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, I remember now. I was like, coca Cola. He's like, yo, do you mean coconut? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, my God. He's like, yo, that's stupid. It's flat out stupid. <laughs> so dumb, man. So dumb. But all right, let's go to the AFC North. Uh, maybe this might be a string of hot takes. Maybe it won't be. But Allen, this team, right off, uh, this this division, I should say, right off the bat, um, I got three playoff teams in it. Same here. Oh, okay. All right, lead us away. What do you? Who do you got winning the division? I still got the Ravens. I know people are anticipating some regression, but I still think the roster is too good. Uh, they've bolstered the defense. Yet yeah, maybe teams will somewhat figure out Lamar knowing that okay well, let's see how Lamar plays from behind because he could tend to struggle but I just think the infrastructure of Baltimore is so good other than losing Marshall Yonda and yes Earl Thomas which I still need more information on I'm devastated lost Earl Thomas because I've always been a huge Earl Thomas guy but I think just they've bolstered mostly defensively I think Clayus Campbell is a game-changing signing and offensively other than Yonda it's like they didn't really lose anyone so I just don't know where Baltimore is really re- going to regress. Like, okay, maybe they play a tougher so, schedule, but besides that, you know, I'm, I'm very intrigued by Dobbins as well. I've been hearing good things about him. So, yeah, Baltimore, I still think they will take the division, but it will be a little more competitive than last year, obviously. Well, sure, they're going to play a harder schedule, but those teams are also going to play 1B in my power rankings if the Chiefs are 1A. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a team that's, you get Marquise Brown, who I think is very fascinating this year. This is a guy who came into last year, and he had that eruption game against Miami. But he was he was so productive, Allen, early in that, that first month of the year, and it made no sense. He was playing like 30 snaps a game. He was getting like 20% of the target market share, and it just so happened that they were connecting. He had the Liz Frank injury coming into the season, where that was a huge red flag for yeah. me. I was saying to myself, how can this guy, anytime a player comes in to the league hurt, it's a cause for concern. And I was hesitant, but Mark Andrews really erupted. I'm hearing some things coming out of Ravens camp where there's some tight end one potential this year with him with like from a fantasy production standpoint. He's clearly, I think, the focal point of their offense from a offensive weapon standpoint. Um non Lamar standpoint, right? Like mm. obviously he's the biggest yeah. weapon on the on the team, but you're right about Yanda. Uh, I'm I'm a little worried that he retired, right? It was yeah. a retirement. Saw a recent picture of him. Lost a lot of Yo, they yeah. all do. Jordan Gross, Jeff Saturday. Yeah, they all do. Even yeah. O'Hara when yeah. when he retired and he went to NFL Network. Mm. I asked retirement because like, man, I don't know if someone retired or if it's the COVID shit with the holdouts. No, he, always, he retired. He yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look, I like Baltimore. I have Baltimore 
um, not winning the division, though. But I have them at 11 and 5. Okay. The team I have winning the division are the Pittsburgh Steelers. Also at 11 and 5. So, like, tiebreaker purposes. I can't look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, Allen, without thinking to myself, this team won eight games last year. And outside of Detroit playing half their games with David Blau and Jeff Driscoll, the franchise Jeff Driscoll, what team had a worse quarterback situation than Pittsburgh? Doug Hodges and Mason Rudolph? Could argue Chicago. Well, Chicago has a – yeah, yeah. But they it's because their quarterback was just – That was just a layup too easy. Yeah, yeah, too easy. Let's not slam this Chicago. They'll get in a little bit. But you, you go 8-8. Eight and eight. I thought that was Tomlin's best – coaching job ever and he's won a super bowl but when you're dealt that hand and you know they had the the miles garrett incident um coming into the year no antonio brown no levy on bell completely new locker room you lose ben yeah. at halftime of week two they didn't really know their receivers either. like they wasted two weeks with dante moncrief that was a total disaster yeah like imagine deontay johnson who i think could emerge as one of the true stars in the league like he he is a scary playmaker. Like he did a lot with little last year when it came to whether it was from as a punt returner or as a receiver, just running like those drag routes. Like he is very dynamic. You know, I don't know if this is a hot take, but he might eventually mature, emerge as like Big Ben's number one option. Like I think he could be better than Juju. That's how good he is. There is nothing you could tell me about Steeler wide receivers that would surprise me. Oh well, the way they develop because you hear all the buzz about Claypool as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was gonna bring him up. Yeah. Right. They take him. And he's a big body wide receiver and something that they're lacking. But, dude, Chase uh, Claypool, he's going to be starting on your fantasy team at, at one point. Like, maybe someone got hurt or maybe you have bye week Just blues. plays his way in there. Bro, I, I don't. I'm still waiting for an answer. I don't know. Maybe you have one. What team develops a position better in the NFL than, than them? I don't know, maybe the Ravens with, like, linebackers or edge rushers. Maybe, but in terms of stars, yeah, no one does it better than Pittsburgh. Like, yo, it's it's unbelievable. I think Juju's going to have a bounce back year. Juju, I think, is being severely slept on. This time last year going into fantasy drafts, people were taking him 6th, 7th wide receiver overall. Now he's like in the 15, 16 range. Why well, is think there's a lot of mouse to feed in Pittsburgh, and he might lose some red zone targets because not just Claypool, like, People can make fun of what you want, but Eric Ebron could still be utilized in the red zone. And also, Ben loves tight ends. Yeah. He's made, you know, Heath Miller was a thing. Right, like, Vance McDonald yeah, is like, a thing there. Ebron could still eat in the red zone. So I think that's why people are a little going on. And then James Washington, so like, they have a lot of weapons, Pittsburgh. It's like, could you imagine if they had like a, a somewhat decent QB last year? So I could see why you're high on. I'm, hey, look, I'm high on Pittsburgh. They still have a really good old line. That defense was like top three last year. They didn't really lose anyone. Like, there's no one on the top of my head where they lost. I was like, is that concerning? Well, it's Hargrove. Hargrave. Ooh, okay. That's the a big def- one, the defensive tackle. But still, you return pretty much everyone else. Yeah, and they got warmly from Baltimore, who should be a decent replacement. But that defense is pretty much low. Like, you can't pay everyone. So, I get it. The Steelers ranked first in Football Outsiders weighted DVOA, which weighs end-of-season games more heavily. And I just think with Ben coming back – um, Steelers defense has a chance to be the best defense in the league. They have the fifth easiest schedule. Their over win total is nine. I think they surpass that. Unless Ben has a a Philip Rivers last year kind perfect of drop comparison. off, right? Yeah. Tell me not. Isn't that perfect comparison? Because when we were going into last year, a lot of people I had the Chargers as a playoff team, and fuck, man, I should have known that was going to happen because. I went against my rules, the one-score game with the Chargers. We'll get to them in a little bit. Mm-hmm. But unless Ben has a fall from grace like that. You know, where he's throwing the ball into traffic. You know, yeah, his deep ball is just staying in the air. And, like, it just deep backs are waiting to pick him off. I'll never forget Tom Brady when he tore his ACL week one in 2008, the year after they went to the Super Bowl and lost to the New York football Giants undefeated season, bedtime for them. He tears his ACL. And he had said that next offseason when he came back, he's like, Sitting out a year and not taking the hits, not going through the reps, extended my career five years. That was 2008. Brady under normal say, like he's an alien, yeah. right? He should have been retired by now. So I think unless Ben has a fall off like that, yo, I think they, from from an AFC standpoint, as far as teams that I think can go to the Super Bowl, that isn't Kansas City, 
and Baltimore because I think with the AFC, dude, it's Chiefs, Ravens, and then there's another tier. Exactly. Where in the NFC, there's like six teams up there. And then that second tier is a lot closer. It's a threat, yeah. Is is a threat. So with Pittsburgh, I think they're a team that, unless Ben falls off a cliff, I'm picking them to win the division, and that's what I'm. Gonna and do. he looks physically like the best shape in maybe ten years. Yeah, like he actually looks like he worked out this off season compared to past years, where it looks like he's been living in Dave and Buster's. <laughs> so hey, I'm excited about Pittsburgh. I think their roster they really built up well, a lot of good drafts. Uh, the Fitzpatrick trade was obviously massive, and you know a lot of players are panning out. Like I know T.J. Watt's like a popular defensive player to your pick. After watching him last year, I don't see why not. Yo, they, I think, I think they have three All Pro players at every level of their defense: Mika Fitzpatrick, Devin Bush, who finished second in Rookie of the Year last mm-hmm. year, only behind Nick Bosa and and T.J. Watt. Yeah, and K.M. Hayward is a bully. Yeah, that is a bully. And, and yo, you know who else still plays well for them too? Joe Hayden. He's yeah. He, he's not. He's, he's gonna, not. He's no longer a top five mm, corner yeah. like he once was with Cleveland. And he used to be. He was like NFL Twitter's. If, if you were a football nerd, you'd be like, "Yo, you know who the best corner in the league is? Joe Hayden." And he was, he would he never was like Namdi after Namdi because like those ba- those corners on bad teams. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah. But but like if you were a, a deep dive football guy and like you really knew your shit, you you would always that would be the guy that you would tell someone like, yeah. "Yo, he's the best corner in the league." And they'd be like, "Yo, you know what? Yeah, you're right." Yeah, those guys are like Bud Dupree was considered a bust. He had a breakout year last year. Stephon to it always been consistent. So they just have so many pieces on that defense. That's that's the reason why you just have to be excited about Pittsburgh. Like for me, if there's a team that's gonna dethrone either Kansas City or Baltimore, like a serious threat, it's Pittsburgh and. Probably that's about it. Unless Belichick pulls some crazy, unless Belichick, Cam, and McDaniel do something crazy. Man, I'm so fascinated by them. New England, that is, and I know we spoke about it, but I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what they do. So I have the Steelers winning the division. Uh, one of my wild card teams are going to be the Baltimore Ravens. Um, you know, they went on a crazy streak last year, bro. They won like 12 straight games. That's a lot of it was convincing. Yeah, that's the thing. Like. They had a plus minus. So when it comes to handicapping, there's three things that I like to look at. Well, there's four things. There's certain statistics, I should say, that are better predictors of team success than others. One score game record. Injury luck. Right? I go back to this all the time. 2011, going into that Super Bowl, the Giants had 52 of 53 starters. Not starters. That's impossible. But... They had 52 of 53 About players the roster. Yeah, from the beginning of the year active for the Super Bowl. One score game, injury luck, margin of victory, and strength of schedule. The Ravens beat the piss out of people last year. Like, domination. Their plus minus in, in was like close to 200 points. And I feel like their roster got better. Patrick Queen was considered a steal. Derek Wolf's a solid veteran. Uh, Pernell McPhee, I'll, I'll, he's been on IR for, I feel like, the past four years. But if he's somehow healthy, he brings a lot of violence. Like, he also he had his success there. So, they have a lot of pieces. I just I hope their old Tom situation doesn't really derail them because it is a bit of a letdown. So, they were net 249 points. That was the most in the league. That means that beating the shit out of people was an understatement. Like, the closest other team was New England at 195. So seven and one at home, seven and one on the road. Question: I feel. Let me know what you think. Obviously, I think Baltimore is one of the few teams that home field advantage means something to their success. There's no doubt about it. It's one of the most intimidating environments. Like look at that Sunday night game against New England. Mm. Completely handled them. When they do the light shit on the touchdown, yeah. that shit is so gangster, bro. It's up there. It, they people always say it's just because uh, they do the Italian chant as well so it just it's always been kind of a scary environment especially there i would probably put it up there with you know, your arrowheads and uh heinz field and uh i'll give philly some love as well they were a team who i'd say surprised people last year in terms of how dominant they were yeah i think people knew they were going to be competitive yeah yeah, yeah. off a of playoffs year yeah and, you know it's a testament to how good of a coach harbaugh is are you buying into this idea that Lamar Jackson has something to prove this year because of the only thing people are nitpicking at is his playoff record? Uh, not not necessarily. I just think 
a couple plays here and there kind of really derailed that game. You you get stopped twice on fourth and short, it's going to greatly affect the game. You're going to have a, I think he had a deflected interception. There were just a couple of plays of that game that really set things apart and between that and Tennessee's ball control offense. I just think it was an unfortunate game. Um, I, I could see why it's maybe in the back of his mind, but I don't think it should really affect him. And it's hard to really put too much stock into that first playoff loss against the Chargers because he was so raw. So I think it'll be all right. So you mentioned that you had three teams in this division. All right. Last year we were very I was very outspoken. Don't bet the Browns. Don't pick the Browns. Last year's boner team. Should have listened to me. They took my heart. And now they took my heart again. Yeah. We're going with the Cleveland Browns. I have the Cleveland Browns making the playoffs. I have the Cleveland Browns at nine and seven. They got an offensive line. They got a NFL caliber coaching staff. Everything that they did this year was to correct the issues and flaws that I had against them last mm-hmm. year. They get Conklin from Tennessee. They get Wills Jr. in the draft out of Alabama. They get a head coach who was proven as a coordinator in Minnesota. In Minnesota, mm-hmm. unlike Freddie Kitchens, who my biggest concern was I'm always I've been able to spot the boner team. Right, I've coined that that phrase where everyone just has a hard on for a team coming in to the year. We've seen it with the Jaguars, we've seen it with the Bears, uh, we saw it with the Browns last year. And there's no thing better as a sports better to bet on than the team that everyone was on the year before or the week before. Public gets let down badly. Fourth best Super Bowl odds in the AFC last year. I thought it was a joke. Now, no one is really on Cleveland the way they were last year. They were just so unprepared and undisciplined. It's crazy that a team that was coached by Greg Williams somehow managed to become more undisciplined. You, that's not supposed to happen. It's supposed to be the other way around. But, yeah, I just think the flaws that we kind of were worried about, especially the offense line, just completely wrecked them. And then, you know, as we mentioned, Baker Mayfield greatly regressed. He looked very rattled in the pocket. You know, I think you could compare – Cleveland to Buffalo in a way where just like they were kind of put all these chips in where it's like okay Baker you got delivered now kind of like Josh Allen it's like you really can't ask for much better you got the weapons you have the offensive line now it's like okay it should be a clean pocket now you gotta go get it that's it and you have a coordinator or a head coach now with Stefanski where I don't think a team ran more play action last year than Minnesota mm-hmm. and Baker is was very good off play action that's like his bread and butter so You'd assume addition of Hooper, Odell should be healthy. Landry still, although Landry I know is come off a of hip surgery, he's still a good possession guy. Like the weapons are there, the protection is there. I think now it just pretty much falls on Mayfield because I think the defense it, it should be at least decent. Like I don't think the defense is gonna fall for anything. I don't think it's gonna be a leap, but they have enough star power there, especially with Miles Garrett coming back, probably coming back with a vengeance as well. Uh, I like a lot of things about this Cleveland Browns team. I just think a lot of it's gonna fall on Baker Mayfield and Kenny. Uh, just bounce back. People were talking about next step. I just think Baker needs to find his, his niche in the league right now because last year was just a complete disaster. They lose Del Pitt, who I thought was a big draft pick coming out of LSU in the secondary. Man, call Earl Thomas. Ooh. Think about that. You I don't, could I don't, know, if they afford, I don't the, know if they could afford him. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. They still have the luxury of not playing paying Baker yet, so maybe yeah. they could give him like a you know. It just they, they've spent a lot of money. They have. Yeah. They have. They played the third most difficult schedule of opposing pass defenses last year. This year, they're projecting per Warren Sharp, my guy Warren Sharp, to have the fourth easiest pass defensive schedule. I just think. Long story short, and I know we've kind of ranted on the Browns a bit. Better head coach than last year upgraded their offensive tackles, which I thought they had the worst offensive tackle situation in the league last yeah, year. They're starting Greg Robinson. That's not a very good idea. I think the only downgrade is probably a linebacker. They lost Schobert. They lost Kirksey. I have no idea who these linebackers are. They replaced them, but you know, hopefully they could manage away that because that D-line is still stacked. I think Garrett's going to take another step. Uh, Vernon should be better. Sean Richardson, he'll make a couple plays here and there. Larry Linjobi. Hopefully, uh, he had a bit of a step back last year, but he's someone that showed a lot of promise his rookie year. You know, there's just a lot of talent still there. I'm still hoping Denzel Ward puts it together. He looks like a special talent. So, yeah, I'm, I'm bank on Cleveland again. By the way, we didn't even mention, we have to give Nick Chubb some love. I think Nick Chubb, man, 
I don't know, I don't like I'm not gonna say he's the best running back league, but from a talent standpoint, he is someone that I would build my whole offense around. Like I would give him a Derrick Henry role, and I would expect him just to explode. I think he's that good. I think he's gonna lead the league in rushing this year. I think you're not he, concerned about the Cream Hunt stealing touches. Nah. Okay. I think that's being overblown. He's still there, though. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I do think if, if Kareem Hunt wasn't there and it was just oh. Chubb, you're talking about like he's a top three fantasy player oh, this year. Oh, absolutely. But I think he could finish as a top five fantasy back. Hmm. He's he's sensational, and he's one of the few guys who I hope how his career ended in, in Georgia. Like, he had a brutal knee injury yeah. there. And then to come out and be the player that he is now, and you're right. Um, the improvements in the offensive line, the two tight end system, that's mm-hmm. becoming more of the even the Rams adapted adopted the two tight end yeah, system too. So Higby emerged. Yeah. And I just think you're right. The Stefanski scheme, very run heavy. I think this is gonna be a big year for them. And you know, Baker Mayfield last year threw twenty one interceptions, second most in the league. He's gonna have to protect the football. Mm-hmm. And I think he's gonna. Um last but not least, the Bengals. Uh, how do you feel about the Bengals? I have them at four and twelve. I'm excited. I know it sounds crazy. I'm just excited about that offense. Yo, can I tell you? Can I tell you a, a crazy take? M- my draft is tomorrow. Um, for those of you listening, my draft already happened. I've come around on Joe Burrow in fantasy. Yeah, he's a good backup. No, no, I'm talking about like starting him. You start him as a Q- like so. If you're in a twelve team league, you would pick him like in the your top twelve QBs. He'd be there. I would I would play him and here's why. Okay. He's a better athlete than people expect. He could pick up 20 to 30 yards a game with his feet. Their defense is going to be historically bad. So, from a fantasy perspective, Blake Bortles. Blake he's Bortles was winning people. Super tough division, though. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not saying to play him against Baltimore. I'm not saying to play him against like Pittsburgh. Well, if you're drafting a starter, like that's true. You, that's you true. Get so, good so maybe I should yeah. fall back a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but I love him as a backup. Like, I, yeah. I think, man, yo, they got some weapons there, bro. They do. Yeah, if AJ stays on the field, Tyler Boyd's always solid. Yeah, T Higgins, we'll see. You know, the uh, the artist known as John Ross, right? <laughs> a couple deep deep shots. He can stay on the field. I just think. If you play the game script, and that's one thing that has been very successful with me in fantasy. Like, if you're projecting the Bengals to be a bad team and throwing from behind, Joe Burrow is exactly the kind of fantasy quarterback you want. Bro, Blake Bortles. Garbage time Blake. How many times were the... Yo, I'll never forget. I'm playing Eric in fantasy football, and I'm up like 28 points, and he has Blake Bortles going into halftime, and he has like 7 points. I'm like, all right. Then I look, he's 29 points. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, I just, think Joe Burrow could be that I just, guy. Yeah, I just try not. Quarterbacks with talent, I try not to compare to Blake Bortles, but from a fantasy <laughs> standpoint, I get what you mean. But like, I don't want to put Joe Burrow and Blake Bortles on the same like stratosphere. Like, I have I have a lot of high hopes for Joe Burrow. I think he's gonna help elevate this very sad franchise, probably one of the worst franchises you know, for the past what three to five years. So, uh, I'm I'm just excited to see what they could build because last year they were just hopeless like there was nothing really to be excited about Cincinnati last year they were a brutal watch so I'm just excited that they have some pieces there it's this is a team that's going to take two three years to build but you know I think they have enough talent there where it's like okay they'll be competitive and they'll be watchable which I think that's what just Bengal fans want at this point there's something that the Bengals do that I find very alarming if I'm scheming for them well if I'm scheming for them it's very helpful but a lot of teams do this too when the Bengals tight end Tyler Eifert is on the field, the Bengals threw 81% of the time. When he was off the field and CJ Uzoma was on the field, they ran the ball 70% of the time. Very similarly, staying in this division, the Steelers rotated running backs James Conner when he went down. Remember Jalen Samuels was on the field? The Steelers went 75% pass when Samuels was on the field and then when Benny Snell was the running back handoffs. So teams... Teams are doing a bad job when everything for the offense is in your favor. Why are you giving away tails like that? Right. If my if I have any defense for it, it's just both teams were very limited offensively last year. Like you look at Pittsburgh, like they were at one point just trying to see what running backs was. Mary Connor was banged up for a majority of the year. Yeah. And then Cincinnati, what kind of they had no offensive identity. That's last true, year. that's fair. And Eifert's not there anymore either, so I guess that's also beneficial. But that's my only defense. I don't look there are a lot of teams that have like these uh, bad tendencies, but you just hope now both teams look much better offensively and they'll learn from them. I think that's like the uh, promising outlook I could give them. 
let's run through our records for each of these the teams in this division just to you know make it straight. I got eleven and five, both the Steelers and the Ravens, but I got the Steelers winning the division. I got the Browns at nine and seven, and I got the Bengals at four and twelve. Okay, I got the Ravens at thirteen and three, Steelers at eleven and five, Browns ten and six, and Bengals five and eleven. Are the Ravens your one seed? Yes. Okay. And Steelers and Browns in that playoff. So I got all three of my wild card teams already. 